Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the normal distribution and related functions in Microsoft Excel. So I have here to the left fictitious data. I have an ID variable and a GPA variable. So this contains GPAs in ascending order. So they start with the lowest value and end with the highest value. So 2.41 is the lowest GPA I'm working with and 3.27 is the highest. And here to the right, I've calculated the count, the, the total number of GPAs I have in the range is 20. The mean, I use the average function for that. And since this would be a sample of a population, I use the sample standard deviation, which is stdev.s, and then this range. So taking a look at the normal distribution function, start with normal distribution, and you can see the first argument it's asking for is x. So that's the actual score, in this case 2.41 then it's looking for the mean so I'll supply the mean and I'll press F4 to make that an absolute reference so I can auto fill the rest of the values and I'll do the same thing with the standard deviation and you can see here you have a choice of the cumulative distribution function or the probability mass function so in this example in column D with the green I'll be using the cumulative distribution function and in column E with the red I'll be using the probability mass function so I'll select true and I'll autofill this all the way down so to interpret the output from the normal distribution function you want to think of this output as a percentage so the value I have selected here that corresponds to a GPA of 2.75. Think of this as 22%. And what it's telling you is that there's a 22% chance that a normal random variable would be less than or equal to your observed score, which is 2.75. So if I move down a bit, say to the GPA of 3.15, there is a 77% chance here that a normal random variable would be less than or equal to 3.15. So let's take a look at the normal distribution function when the last argument is set to false, which is the probability mass function. So it'll start off the same way. I'll put in the score for x and I'll use an absolute reference for the mean and for the standard deviation but when I get to the last argument I'm going to select the probability mass function instead of the cumulative distribution function and I'll autofill this for all the scores here and you can see this looks a bit different from the cumulative distribution function these values start off low then you can see they get higher uh, this one peaks at 1.5 which you see is very close to the mean and then they start going lower from there so I'll illustrate uh, this data set using a chart in this case a uh, line chart And you can see that this resembles the bell curve. So what the normal distribution function returns when the last parameter is set to probability mass function is the height of the bell-shaped probability density curve. So moving on to the inverse of the normal distribution, I'm going to populate this and you can see that instead of 
the x value here instead of the score, the observed score, it's asking for probability. So you have to supply this function the probability and it will return the score. So the probability in this case would be the 0 0.02 and then of course we're going to load the mean and the standard deviation in the same way. And you see there is no fourth argument for this function. It's just probability, mean, and standard deviation. And you can see it returns the scores that correspond to these probability values. And of course, they're the same GPA scores that we have over here. So in, to interpret the output here, you consider this GPA of 3.19 has a corresponding 81% normal distribution score. You could interpret this as at what score would a normal random variable have an 81% chance of being less than or equal to? And in this case, of course, we know it's 3.19. So it's the inverse of the normal distribution output. So now looking at the standard normal distribution, I'm going to have to first standardize these scores to show you how that works. So a standard score in this case uh, that we'll be using is a z-score, which has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And I'm selecting that because a normal standard distribution is a special case of a normal distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So I'm going to use standardize, and I will be supplying the score then the mean, then the standard deviation. And again, you can see just three arguments here. So the corresponding z-score for a GPA of 2.41 is negative 2.04. And I can auto-fill this down, and it provides me with the rest of the z-scores. So the normal standard distribution function works the same way as the normal distribution function, except the mean is always 0 and the standard deviation is always 1, which means you need to supply it with the z-score. So as I bring it up, you can see the first argument it's looking for is the z-score. You can't supply it with the raw score, and you can't supply it with the probability. It has to be the z-score. And then you have two choices here, cumulative distribution function or probability density function. In this case, I'm going to select cumulative distribution function. And I'll autofill this all the way down. And as you can see, because I use the standardized scores here, it matches the original normal distribution output. It's the same output. And if you want to get back to the z-score from this probability, you would use the inverse of the normal standard distribution. and simply supply the probability, which would be here. And you can see the z-scores match. It returns you back to the z-score. If I autofill it, you can see that all the z-scores in column G are an exact match. I hope this video on the normal distribution related functions in Excel was helpful to you. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.